Obviously, Denzel and Dakota have a relationship from Man on Fire, which was fantastic. We got blessed and lucky to have her want to do this film, and that love is still there between the two. I think that in this story, it's much more personal because she doesn't know why he's helping her. We discover that, but there's that genuine love there between Denzel Washington and Dakota Fanning that comes through. Since giving up his life as a government assassin, Robert McCall, played by Denzel Washington, has struggled to reconcile the horrific things he has done in the past and finds a strange solace in serving justice on behalf of the oppressed. Finding himself surprisingly at home in southern Italy, he discovers his new friends are under the control of local crime bosses. As events turn deadly, McCall knows what he has to do, become his friend's protector by taking on the mafia. Antoine Fuqua and Denzel Washington reunite for the final installment of the Equalizer trilogy, taking the franchise's thrilling action and captivating Vigilante to a new setting. What fate awaits Robert McCall in Equalizer 3? In this third film, Robert finds himself on the brink of death after sustaining a gunshot wound during a covert mission in Sicily. The opening scene of the movie is filled with blood dripping acts that will make a viewer stick around to watch so as to know the outcome. The movie kicks off in Sicily. An Italian drug lord and his child pull up in a jeep to a secluded villa, strewn across the rustic courtyard, which on better days would be an ideal vacation spot are the bloodied, dismembered bodies of a goon army. The man exits the jeep with a pistol, leaving the kid in the vehicle. He and one of his henchmen enter the home, where they discover more carcasses whose causes of death have been riddled of bullets, their faces cleaved by a butcher's knife, presenting increasingly gruesome scenes. Further down the walk path, the hitman Robert McCall, played by Denzel Washington, sits in the middle while two gunmen pointed guns at his head. The scene showed that McCall got apprehended and became the prisoner, while the gunmen waited for their leader to come so as to decide Robert McCall staying alive fate. He, of course, dispatches them with ease, grabbing a set of keys from the dead drug lord's body that hold what McCall came to retrieve. On exiting the venue, Robert McCall got injured in the back by a gunshot wound that was ditched into his back by the son of the drug lord he just killed. As a result, Robert, who goes by Roberto now, Gracia, sustained an injury. Eventually, Robert was discovered by a local cop, Gio, played by Eugenio Mastrandria, who takes him to a quaint seaside Italian village, or Alto Monte. At the village, a local doctor named Enzo, played by Remo Girone, comes to McCall's rescue by offering to treat his wounds. The medical treatment enabled McCall to recover from the injury. Robert recovers in the small town or village, fondling, befriending, and establishing sibling love and affections with the residents. McCall newfound family made him want to seek solace there because of the friendliness of the people. While recuperating in the restful town, McCall learns to further love the people and the peace they provide him. But violence plagues them as the Camorra shakes down its citizens for money. A local young gang leader, Marco, played by Andrea Dodero, looms over them. A local crime boss named Vincent instills fear among the townsfolk with his drug empire. Robert McCall, who says he is just passing through, would like avoiding intervening, since he wishes to live a quieter life. However, like any Western, when push comes to shove, he cannot stand idly by while gangsters threaten his new neighbors. McCall, once again, is compelled to defend his beloved neighbors and friends as he teaches them how to stand up to their oppressors. Determined to protect his new community, Robert confronts Vincent, facing off against one of his most formidable opponents. Although the movie started off with plot and storyline that did not properly correlate each scenes as the movie progressed, but the movie, towards the middle of play, started to throw in some relationships to various scenes and characters. Well, maybe. Antoine Fuqua set up the movie to flow in a confusing but suspensive way at the beginning to the middle. In this way, the viewing audience will stick around longer to watch the movie so as to know exactly what is going on in the storyline and plot. The subplot. 
The subplot introduces the character Emma Collins, played by Dakota Fanning, as a CIA agent. Dakota Fanning is reteaming with Denzel Washington in this movie. Both Dakota and Denzel have previously starred together in the movie, Man on Fire. Robert McCall phones a tip to Collins' desk that will change her career. The information takes her from working a call center, so to speak, to field work. Emma Collins, as a CIA agent, becomes an unexpected ally to McCall as he fights the Italian Mafia. Throughout the movie, Collins is left in the dark about why exactly McCall called her desk at the CIA center and used her to help break open the Italian Mafia investigation. The truth about their relationship comes in the movie's ending. McCall mentions during a final conversation with Collins that her mother would be proud of her, hinting that he is aware of her heritage. The movie then shows a picture on Emma's desk showing Melissa Leo, Dakota Fanning, and Bill Pullman's characters together. The confirmation that Emma Collins is Brian and Susan Plummer's daughter comes through a few details in the movie. How Equalizer 3 linked to Equalizer 2, which pinned it to what became Robert McCall's first and final Equalizer 3 mission. Equalizer 3 Inches opens with McCall just after his ruthless killing of a small army of Sicilian mobsters, and then McCall getting injured with sustained gunshot to the back. Robert McCall, as the movie progressed, added to the gruesome tally with more killings, without the scenes explaining his real reasoning for doing all the killings. That's part of the mystery, right until the end, why he's there in Italy, says Antoine Fuqua. By connecting the dots, McCall explains his exotic location change to Collins during a conversation. When McCall was a Boston Lyft driver in Equalizer 2, he picked up a passenger, Greg Dyer, who unknowingly relayed how his entire pension of $366,400 was stolen. McCall tracked down the criminals behind the theft in Italy and killed them, thus uncovering the drug ring. McCall removed the $366,400 that was stolen from Dyer from the criminal coffers. After the entire ring was broken, McCall directed Collins to return the money, in cash, to the shocked Bostonite ride-sharing app user and his wife. Dyer lived on the street where Robert McCall used to live on, and McCall gave him a lift, says Fuqua. The money is the final payback after his final masterpiece of violence, said Antoine Fuqua. Overall, The Equalizer 3 Inches is a good action movie that is worth watching. The movie has a lot of action scenes and the story is engaging. Denzel Washington's performance is excellent, and he delivers a great performance as always. However, the movie is not suitable for everyone due to its violence and brutal kills. 